What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Sabi. Welcome to another episode of Self Mastery. Thank you guys so much for tuning into my channel. Before I begin today's video, I want to say yes, I have been MIA for the past few days only because as you guys know, I run a full-time business online and so priorities come up and um, I haven't been able to delegate time to making videos. But today I am presenting you with a brand new video and on top of that, the next few days you will see a string of videos coming online. So get ready for new content. Also, if you have not already checked out my previous videos or my previous content on my channel, feel free to do so today or whenever you have time. I always recommend, because my videos can be a little bit longer, play my videos while you're taking a shower, while you're brushing your teeth in the morning, maybe when you're driving, or maybe when you're at the gym or taking a walk in the park, right? Definitely those are the best times to listen to my videos because there's a lot of information that I share and it's important that you guys absorb it all. Without further ado, today's topic, the pros and cons of being an entrepreneur. So if you are deciding to be an entrepreneur, if this is some uh, a desire you've had for a while, if it's something you've been contemplating or thinking about, then this video is the video for you. A little bit of a background, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. I grew up uh, in a business mindset household. Uh, I've never held a nine to five job. So yes, I may be biased in my video, but I'm going to try to be as objective as I can possibly be. But let's not wait any longer. Let's get right into the video. Let's talk about the cons. I'm going to start talking about the cons of being an entrepreneur first, and then I'll talk about the pros. But con number one is that you have to work many, many, many hours every single day, day in and day out. And that's just part of the entrepreneurial journey, right? Compared to a nine to five where you work, you know, a set eight hours uh, and maybe, you know, you have a drive to and from work uh, that can maybe add in, you know, some time, even though you're not consciously working during those, uh, you know, commuting hours, so to speak. But still, you know, you can you can factor those in. Uh, but with the entrepreneurial journey, you know, you you have to grind, you have to hustle, you have to work as much as you possibly can. can. Um, at least 12 to at least 12 hours, I would say 12, 14, 16, maybe up to 18 hours, you know, but obviously get your sleep guys. Sleep is very important, but it can go up there. You know, that's my point. So if you're coming into this journey thinking about, Hey, you know, being an entrepreneur is easy. I have time freedom, which you do. And I'll talk about that later on in the beginning, when you're first starting your business or when you're first starting your venture and you know, you're, you're taking time to establish a foundation or, or you're trying to figure out, you know, what direction you're headed in or, or how to plan out your, you know, your yearly goals or maybe your next 10 year goals, right? Depending on what your business is, you're going to have to put in a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of time and patience that's going to go in to making sure that, you know, all the tasks are done on time. So because of that, there's going to be a lot of time that you're going to have to give in the beginning and maybe even during the middle of your, you know, entrepreneurial journey, maybe even, you know, continuing. It's, it's just part of the process. And that's why I say as a side note, pick something or do something that you truly love, something that you are passionate about because for you to be able to put that many hours in, you must be doing something that you must really care about. If not, you're going to get tired. You're going to give up. You're going to get burnt out. Um, and so that's one thing you must think about, right? Don't just pick any single, uh, venture because it sounds good or because it may seem like it may make a lot of money. You know, that's that it, 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 it all sounds good to the ear, but when it comes to really applying, you know, the effort and the work, then you're going to really experience it firsthand, what it feels like to really work that many hours. And then, you know, you, you may get tired, you may get burnt out. So pick something or do something that you are truly passionate about. Um, so yes, that is con number one, that there's a lot of hours you're going to have to put in. Uh, now, obviously I have a list written down and I spent some time uh, this morning to write a list of pros and cons 
for you guys. So I will be reading off this list. So bear with me. But con number two is that you're going to have to do all the tasks yourself in the beginning until you can get yourself up to a good uh, platform where you can start delegating jobs to other people, start hiring employees. Until that time comes, you're going to have to do everything yourself. Now me, I'm a fashion designer. I run an online e-commerce business. And because of that, I had to do everything myself in the beginning, right? I had to go buy fabric myself. Uh, obviously, I had tailors. I'm not a tailor myself. So, um, you know, that job was delegated to tailors where tailors were able to, uh, you know, produce the clothing. However, we had to oversee their work. We had to supervise their work to make sure no mistakes were being made. So we were also acting like uh, production managers, or at least I was acting like a production manager. Um, then obviously comes the whole you know concept of making a website. I didn't hire anybody to make a website. I made it myself. I learned how to do it. I learned the ins and outs, right? I had to learn e-commerce, how e-commerce works. I had to figure out how shipping works, how taxes work. Uh, I, I had to you know do all accounting myself. Then comes photography, right? You have to do product photography. I obviously, when I first started out, didn't have that much of a budget. Uh, so I, you know, bought whatever camera I had. I bought, you know, whatever kind of stu studio equipment I could at that time. And then I learned how to do product photography. Then editing, I had to edit all the pictures. I had to upload. I had to do all sorts of um, graphic designing for banners, for websites, you know, so much had to go in. And then obviously comes marketing, you know, the list goes on. It, it's, it's a lot, you know, being an entrepreneur. And so you have to learn every single thing to a degree. And I've learned a lot over the years, right? I started my business or at least the business idea in 2015. And so I've been working for the past seven years on getting myself to where I am now. And I'm still not where I truly want to be yet. That's why I continue working really hard day in and day out because that's just the lifestyle. But for me, I grew up in this, right? I, I've, I'm used to working like this. I'm used to being independent. But anyways, I'll talk about some more things like that later on. Con number three is that you're gonna have to invest all your money into this, this business that you've started or this venture that you're, you're taking this journey into, right? You're gonna have to invest a lot. So going back to my example, right, when it comes to clothing or fashion designing, I had to take all my money and invest it in equipment, right? Like I talked about photography equipment, studio equipment. I had to invest in buying fabric, buying materials for clothing production, right? I had to pay the tailors for their work. Um, and then also I had to, you know, pay for the services I use online, like Shopify and all these different sorts of platforms. So whatever business you start, there's going to be costs up front that are necessary to start a business and you're going to have to invest your money into your business. Now, another con is that if your business is not successful, then yes, you will lose that money. So be careful, you know, and be wary of how you invest. Don't just put all your eggs in one basket and expect that that basket to be the one that, you know, uh, produces all the, the, the fruit for you or, or produces all the results for you. So be careful in how you invest. Um, I would say if you have an access to a mentor, learn from a mentor, um, or, you know, there's people online, there's mentors online you can learn from depending on whatever field of work you're interested in doing. So, Going back, you do have to invest a lot of money, um, not always a lot of money, but you do have to invest something to get started. So just remember that. And for me right now, currently, as I, you know, continue making more clothing as you know, obviously my collections keep selling out, which is a blessing. Thank the most high. Uh, but I keep reinvesting whatever profit I make back into the business. So that's something you also have to keep in mind that. Um, you know, you're going to have to invest your money back into the business. This is not a nine to five where you get, you know, a steady paycheck. Um, and then, you know, you can do whatever you want with it. Obviously after paying bills, you know, many people that get the nine to five steady paycheck, you know, they buy clothing, they go out to eat, they go out on the weekends, have fun. And you know, that's a beautiful thing. They can do all of that. But as an entrepreneur, you're going to have to be wise with your money, right? You're going to be, you're, you're going to have to be wise with you know, where your money's allocated. And so that's going to take me into con number four, which is 
you don't really know when your next paycheck is coming when you're an entrepreneur and that's really the truth of it all a great example i can give you guys is that obviously you know i do clothing but there was also a small period where i was doing real estate because i'm also a realtor uh or, or a real estate agent whatever you guys call it right um and so there there's been many times where i've put in so much work and so many hours into showing people houses and things like that and uh you know maybe i would lose the buyer or maybe the deal would fall through maybe their loan didn't get approved right and so I would be missing out on that paycheck, right? Because I've done all this work, but that all that work doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to get a paycheck. Um, and so that's one of the, the cons, one of the biggest cons of being an entrepreneur is that you don't know when your next paycheck is coming. However, one of the things that I did learn from, you know, um, from this, from, from not getting that steady paycheck, which I feel like nine to five people I would say a lot of them, I don't know the statistic, right? But a lot of them don't probably have this habit is budgeting, right? So for me as an entrepreneur, I learned how to budget. I learned how to use money efficiently for the things I need to really use it for. Obviously my expenses or my bills being the first thing. So whenever I would get a payout, you know, I would obviously pay my bills and then whatever was left over, I would figure out how to use it in a smart, decisive way in terms of whether it was reinvesting back in my business or whether it was, you know, um, buying things I needed to expand my business or, or whatever it was, but I, I learned how to budget. Um, and obviously, you know, when you first start out as an entrepreneur, um, or even if you're a little bit in, maybe a year or two, right? And maybe your business is not doing as good as you want it to be yet because there's still a lot more that needs to be done then you're gonna have to learn how to sort of live below your means as well, right? With a nine to five, you know, that may not be such a problem compared to, you know, being an entrepreneur, but with an, being an entrepreneur and, and the, the unknowingness of when your next paycheck is coming, you're gonna have to really change a lot of your financial habits. Uh, like I just mentioned, when it comes to either budgeting or living below your means. So that's something you also have to factor in when you're starting this journey of being an entrepreneur. Now, let me go into the con number five, which is there is definitely stress that is involved and definitely your mind will always be focused on your business. So I have had a lot of sleepless nights. I've had insomnia for a period of time because of my business. I've had stress. I've had uh, an anxiety attack before. And I know it sounds really bad coming from me. <laughs> um, and I'm not trying to scare anybody that, hey, you know, this uh, being an entrepreneur is really hard or really, really bad for you. Don't do it. No, obviously, as I mentioned earlier in the video that this is my life. I've always been an entrepreneur and I've always, you know, just this is the kind of life I I've always lived. And I do want to say that I'm blessed and I wouldn't wouldn't want to change this for anything. I would never, I, and I will still never get a nine to five job ever in my life. And I'll go into the pros shortly, but I do want to go back to con number five is that yes, there is a lot of stress that is involved. You are going to be tired. You are going to be just overwhelmed at times, you know, when things are going wrong, when things are going downhill, you are going to freak out. You are going to panic. Um, and so obviously this is where, you know, meditation comes in. This is where, you know, learning how to be okay with things going wrong. You know, this is where, you know, having a thick skin comes in. Right. Um, but yeah, those things are going to happen. And yes, your mind is always going to be thinking about your business, right? How you can improve or, you know, things that you, that need to be done tasks that you need to finish, right? Maybe there's weekly goals that you set and you're always thinking about them. So yes, your mind will always be preoccupied with being an entrepreneur. That's just the reality of it. Now, I know I've scared you guys enough. Let's get into the pros, the advantages of being an entrepreneur. So pro number one or advantage number one is that there is no income cap. And this is honestly the beauty of being an entrepreneur is that there's no, there's no limit to how much money you can make. Now with a nine to five, you have a set income. Yes, it's a stable and steady paycheck, but it's a set income, right? Maybe you're making $2,000 a month. Maybe you're making $3,000 a month. Maybe you're making four or five, $6,000 a month, right? But that's all you're making. 
and it might be a few years before you get a raise, right? And then obviously when you get a raise, they deduct more taxes. So you're not really getting too much of a raise. Might be a little bit, it might be a thousand dollars, might be five hundred dollars, might be fifteen hundred, two thousand max, right? Depending on what job you're at. Um, but with being an entrepreneur, it all depends on how much you put in, how much you know productivity that you're you're putting in, how much value you're you're sharing to your customers, your clientele, and then your income is based on that. So within a year, two, three years, you could really scale your business to a six-figure business, a seven-figure business. There's no income cap, and you can keep going. You you can go up to maybe eight, nine, ten figures right per year. And people have done that, right? Many people do that. And so that's the beauty of having a business is that there's no limit to how much money you can make. And that's honestly one of the biggest reasons why I'm an entrepreneur is because every single year I've seen my income double. And that's really the truth of it all, you know? And so that's why I continue being an entrepreneur because there is no cap to how much you can make. Now, advantage number two or pro number two is you have your own schedule right and that's one thing that i am a big fan of because i like to work on my own time i like to work on my own uh you know decisions right so you can wake up whenever you want you can go to sleep whenever you want obviously like i mentioned you do have to put in the hours but you do have a set schedule um now me mostly i work throughout the night not like obviously like you know i don't sleep at all i do sleep but you know i can go up to maybe 2 3 uh, a.m uh, just working late night because I find myself to be productive during those hours. Uh, but you know, slowly I'm gonna make the shift of waking up early and start, you know, working earlier. Uh, it all depends on what suits your lifestyle. What what is what is deemable for you, right? But there, you have your own schedule, right? There is no set schedule like there is in a, in a nine to five that you have to be, wake up at this time. You have to be at work at this time. If you're late, your boss is gonna you know, yell at you or he's going to write you up or whatever, right? Or, you know, you could potentially get fired for being late. And then obviously there's a set time you have to leave work. All these kinds of things, you know, that that matters, you know, it matters to me at least. And I like to live life on my own terms. I like to have my own schedule. I like to wake up. Uh, maybe there's certain days I don't want to work because I'm tired or I'm sick or I, I just, you know, want to maybe want to take a vacation or something like that. That is all possible as well. So that's really a beauty of being an entrepreneur is that you have your own time, you have your own schedule, and that's really what time freedom is all about, you know? Yes, I work most of the hours that I'm up, you know, because I'm still trying to scale my business more and more and more until I get to a place where I'm satisfied. But until then, you know, I still have my own time to do whatever I want. But let's go to pro number three or advantage number three is that you have self-responsibility. Now, this is an advantage for me. It might not be an advantage for other people. It might not be a, a, a benefit for other people because, you know, a lot of people that work a nine to five like to be told what to do or like to, like to be told like, hey, these are the tasks you need to accomplish for the day, do them. And they're okay with that. And, you know, they, they like to have that boss over them telling them what to do, right? Me personally, I don't like having anybody, no boss over me telling me what I need to do, when I need to do it by. I don't, I don't like having that kind of, you know, uh, dichotomy between me and a boss, right? I like being responsible for myself. Now, does that put pressure on me? Sure it does because, you know, it makes me realize that if my business is not doing good this month or next month, it's because of me. I, I messed up or I, I'm not doing something that I need to do in order to do it but i love that i love that part because not only does entrepreneurial lifestyle um give you the ability to, to be responsible but if there's any area that you're not excelling in or any area that you're not you know uh doing as good as you want to that's where character building comes in and so being an entrepreneur allows you to build your character, allows you to transcend habits that are no longer serving you when it comes to your business, right? So maybe you're not, you know, um, you know, doing your t work on time. Maybe you're not, you know, um, meeting certain tasks when they need to be met, right? And so 
you you self evaluate you look at yourself and you analyze yourself and the habits and and the and the things that you're putting your time and attention towards and you reassess and you figure out you know what do i need to change about myself what do i need to change about my mindset what do i need to change about my habits and for me that's something i love to do because i'm obsessed with self improvement i'm obsessed with character development right so for me being responsible is such a a uh, blessing and it's such an advantage so that's why i consider this to be a pro i consider this to be an advantage or benefit of being an entrepreneur you guys may not obviously the 9 to 5 people that like to be told what to do they may not consider this to be an advantage but i do but anyways heading on to the next one number 4 is financial freedom right and time freedom so this goes hand in hand uh with uh pro number 1 and 2 is that yes there's no income cap you can make as much money as you want as much as you could possibly desire to make right set a goal and you'll make it and then obviously there's time freedom so to me i think to be a truly sovereign being in this world or to be a truly sovereign individual is you must have financial freedom to do what you want to do when you want to do it right and that to me is abundance right that to me is truly being free is that you can you can go out there and buy what you need to buy when you want to buy it um and you have the time to do whatever you want you have the time to hang out with your family you have the time to travel you have the time to do all these things now yes these these benefits don't come as soon as you start being an entrepreneur they're going to come later down the journey and that's where patience comes in but when you get to that place then literally like financial freedom time freedom you've beat the rat race you've beat the 9 to 5 matrix system you've beat it all and then you can live your life according to your own terms and so that's the beauty of it all remember that uh next one creativity if you feel like you are a creative person and you feel like the 9 to 5 struggle the 9 to 5 you know prison system is you know not letting you be creative fully creative uh or being the creative individual that you are then being an entrepreneur might be the right thing for you right if you're an artist if you're a writer if you're a poet if you are a designer if you are a a musician whatever you are right if you have that creative talent within you and you want to do that for the rest of your life if you want to expound on that and make that your primary focus of life if that if you want to make that your passion but also you want to transform your passion into a career then yes i would say be an entrepreneur Is it going to be easy? Like I mentioned, no. Right? You're going to have to put in the hours, you're going to have to put in the work. It, you know, consistency, patience, faith, all that goes in, but it's going to be perfect for you because if you're a creative individual, the the rat race, the 9 to 5 job system is not going to help you, right? It's not going to help you at all because at the end of the day, you're going to be doing something that you don't love doing. You're going to be, you know, pretty much um what's the word um I forgot the word but there's a word it it means that uh, you're you're pretty much going to be denying for a lack of a better word your own creativity you're going to be sort of repressing it there we go that's the word repressing or suppressing your creativity and that's going to lead to an unhappy life to be completely honest with you guys so if you are a creative being be an entrepreneur right and if that's something you want to do start now now is always the best time next um This is probably the last pro that I have on the list is just the satisfaction of doing what you love to do, right? So, I think this is the biggest thing of being an entrepreneur is that you're doing what you love to do, right? Now, if you, I don't know why you guys want to be an entrepreneur if you're thinking about being an entrepreneur, think about why you want to be an entrepreneur, right? Think about what is the reason. Now, if you're just trying to make more money, this may not be the journey for you because at some point if money is your motive you're going to get tired you're going to get burnt out you're going to sacrifice your health for nothing but paper right that's pretty much what it is or just digits in your bank account right i would say figure out your purpose in life figure out what it is that you feel like you can sacrifice your entire life for right for me i am obsessed with fashion i love fashion i love selling online i love providing value to people whether it's through YouTube whether it's through my business and for me I want to live my life doing that forever right I want to provide this value as much as I can as long as I live and so for me that's my why that's why I do this all and so 
I get satisfaction from doing my business and I'm obsessed and I, and I, and I, have, and I enjoy so much what I love to do. I love, uh, you know, selling my creativity. I love selling my clothing. I love selling my designs online, right? And I get so happy uh, that people appreciate the work that we're doing, right? Obviously, I have a team now, but I appreciate the fact that, you know, people are people are wearing my clothing or wearing our clothing, right? And so, um, as a side note, my link is down below in the uh, description. Take a look at you know our um, Shopify. We have a lot more collections coming this year, uh, but stay tuned. But going back to satisfaction, figure out your why, and then pretty much once you know that this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, start your entrepreneurial journey, and you'll get to where you want to be. It's not going to happen in a year. It's not going to happen in two years. It may happen in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. It could be that long, right? I've been on this journey for seven years, and I've gone full time for the past two years. Past two years, I've gone full time. Uh, before then, I was still mixing up different things here and there. You know, uh, I was still working for my dad's business. I was still doing other things, real estate, like I mentioned. And so now I've been finally able to go full time, and I've been seeing the benefits of going full time because now all my attention and focus is towards that. But I feel satisfied every single day, waking up knowing that I get to do what I love. I get to. Uh, increase my business, expand my business, improve myself, improve everything, right? And that to me is the biggest payoff of being an entrepreneur is the satisfaction factor. Uh, but if you guys uh, enjoy this video or if you got any value from this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please share this video with your kids, with your friends, with your family, whoever wants to be an entrepreneur. But you know, I try to be as objective as possible. As you guys know, I've come from a entrepreneurial background. I've pretty much been an entrepreneur my whole life. I tried to be as um, unbiased as possible, and I feel like I have been. The cons themselves may scare you, but at the end of the day, it's a beautiful journey to be an entrepreneur. Um, but thank you so much for making it this far in the video. Stay tuned for my next upcoming content i have a lot more videos dropping for you guys a lot of gems in the works uh, but give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i will see you guys in the next episode thank you so much